In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Van Powers Urban Glide Ultra. Now this is a mid-drive torque sensing bike. So if you've been in the market looking for an e-bike and you've kind of been debating whether or not you should get a hub drive or a mid-drive, in this video I'm going to be explaining a lot more about the differences between a hub drive and a mid-drive motor and why you might want to consider one and why it may not be the bike for you. There is a big difference between the two. The one thing I want to point out with this bike is Lately, there's been a lot more restrictions, there's a lot more news about different cities and states that are actually beginning to crack down on electric bikes, especially ones that are actually out of the class of where they're riding in. So this is a true class one bike. Now there is a part in this video I'm going to point out that it says class two on it, but as far as the classes go in the United States, this bike falls into all qualifications as a class one bike, which means it's completely legal to ride in most places that regular bikes are allowed because it does not have a throttle. So that's one thing that you really need to keep in mind about this bike as well. Again, more explanation in the video itself. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much Van Powers for sending this bike, the Urban Glide Ultra, for giving me a chance to go in and review it. It's been a blast and it's actually been a, a refresher as to why torque sensing bikes are really a bike to consider for some riders. It's been a great review for me to be able to do. I'll see you guys in the video. Let's get started. The Urban Glide Ultra was fairly easy to unbox and assemble. As usual, whenever I unbox a new bike, I always start by adding flat out tire sealant to the tires. When putting an e-bike together, I would highly recommend having two people. Since I do 99% of the unboxings myself, I used a bike stand once I had the handlebars installed and lightly tightened, it was time to add the front tire to the fork. I took a few minutes to read the manual and to double check which way Van Power says I need to add the front rims quick release skewer and I also wanted to assure that I attached the headlight and front fender properly. This took a little time, but once it was all said and done and properly adjusted, all I needed to do was carefully connect the wire for the headlight and wrap it with the other wires to keep everything nice and neat. The bike was then taken off the stand so I could begin to adjust the stem's angle and handlebar's pitch and then tighten everything down. Now, all I had to do was put on the pedals and make sure that the bike would power up and I was ready to ride. This is the beautiful Van Powers Urban Glide Ultra. Now the Urban Glide models actually have three different styles. There is the Urban Glide Ultra, which you're seeing right here. And there's also an Urban Glide Pro and one other model that are actually not mid-drive. So let's start with why this is called the Ultra and what makes this bike so amazing, seriously amazing. Because first of all, this is a Bafang M600 mid-drive motor. Puts out 500 watts of power and I believe like 90 to 95 newton meters of torque out of that. And when you couple that type of torque and power to a nine speed transmission that we have here in the back, I'll turn the bike down a little later so you can see that closer from the other side. But this bike is one of the funnest bikes I've had in a long time. And one of the reasons is not only because it has a mid-drive torque sensored type drivetrain here but also because just the way that this whole bike is designed with the amount of or the components that they put on here they spared no expense on getting this to be a really awesome full commuter bike to be considered okay so first and foremost of all again i did say this is a mid drive so those of you who are not familiar with the difference between a mid drive and a hub drive is if you look here this is where the motor is and if you look toward the back here there is no motor so the back of this bike here is just like a regular bicycle where it has the gearing in the back and then you have your disc brakes and everything else. I'll talk more about those components a little more, but for the most part, all the power comes from 
the motor in the front here. Now that being said, although all the power is coming from here, what happens is it takes advantage of actually the gearing ratios that are here as well. So like when you're pedaling a regular bike and you need a little more gearing to allow you to pedal a little easier going up a hill, you can switch the gearing here and the motor will take advantage of that because the motor is actually spinning here along with your pedaling. So here's another thing that's interesting. Watch what happens when I'm actually turning the pedal backwards. You notice the chain doesn't move. So that's another big difference here is that it's not spinning the backside at the same time. And that's because of the way the whole, the whole motor is actually designed. Now, if I push down on the pedal here, what it does is it activates what's called the torque sensor. And the torque is actually figuring out how much torque or how much pressure is being put on the pedals here to make the motor start to go. So the more pressure you put, the more power you actually get from the motor. And that's up to 400% more power than what you're putting in there. And that's a lot when it's coming from a 500 watt motor that's actually going through the drivetrain back here. Now it does cap out at 19 miles an hour where the power is actually not being assisted anywhere. You can go faster. In some of the footage you'll see we went up to like 35 miles an hour just rolling down a hill. So it doesn't like stop the bike from going any faster. It's just that it doesn't give you more any extra assist. Now why that is important is so there's something that's interesting. It does actually have a class two sticker, but according to what the classes are defined as, this is actually a true class one bike. So I would actually technically probably pull this off or ask them to send you a class one because it falls within all of the rules and regulations of a class one bike. And what that means is that class one bikes in most places, most states and most even federal land, class one bikes are allowed wherever regular bikes are ridden. Anything that goes class two and above, some places don't allow it because there's throttles. And now what makes this a class one as well, the classification is if you look up here, there is no throttle on this dashboard. Some of the pros and the cons between that two, a pro being that you can have this bike ridden almost anywhere because it's you know, under 750 watts, it's under 20 miles an hour when you pedal and it doesn't have a throttle. So that makes it a class one. That means that you can actually take this bike anywhere, but the disadvantage is that you will never have the ability to go ahead and start moving the bike without actually pedaling at least or putting pressure on the pedal there to make the torque center activated. So for those of you who are looking for a bike where basically you can ride around almost like a moped, this bike will not allow you to do that. Besides that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other components on there because this is one of those bikes that if you want a bike that has a real bike feel, that's what you're gonna get. And that's what a lot of people want. Sometimes the pedaling is actually so light that you need to do. It is practically like air pedaling and losing like almost feeling like a throttle because the motor is so powerful. So you can always turn that down. You have like five different levels of pedals. So I'll talk about that a little later. But in the meantime, this is what you're seeing as a kind of a class one bike with a mid drive. Now, another thing that's really beneficial about the mid drive is the weight distribution. You have it in the middle here. So the bike is a lot more balanced. It actually feels a lot more balanced when you're riding it. Plus the battery is centered also in the middle of the bike here. The other great thing about this is the step through. It's so approachable. It's easy to get through that. It's quite low. In fact, let's go ahead and measure that one. Okay, so I happen to actually have a yardstick in the garage here, so we can actually see. And this step through is about, so I would say it's gonna be about 20 inches when the bike is actually sitting straight up and down. You know, so you, it's very little to go ahead and get your foot over that. All right, since we still have the bike in this angle, let's go ahead and some of the components that are on this side first, because I wanted to bring this up uh, as also showing some of the great components that are on this bike. One is, it does have Tektrol hydraulic brakes using 180 millimeter rotors. So there you got a lot of stopping power happening on there. Moving up a little more here, if you notice, we have a very solid rack here with amount, it says here 25 kilograms. I believe that actually turns, converts up to 55 pounds that's available for you to go ahead and put on this rack to carry around. So this makes it perfect for those that are doing even some delivery or commuting. Uh, when you have to carry stuff or even like I carry my lunchbox, I'd be able to strap it in here with no problem. Or if you're going to go grocery shopping, you can don't have to worry about what you're going to have to buy as long as you can fit it on the rack. Now you're probably going to have to get a good strong um, pannier bag. I would actually, I'll put a link below to like the Rock Brothers bag. That would be a great bag for this because it'll be solidly held on there. And you also have a tail light in the back here and that is an integrated tail light. So what you can do here is we can just go ahead and hit this up button here that turns on the lights. And then what you'll see is that we now have our tail light turned on. In fact, I'm gonna hold it down again and you'll see that it turns right back off. So that's what it looks like off. 
Now this does not operate as a brake light. They also have, again, fenders also in the front and the back. This has to be installed when you're actually putting the bike together. You'll see that in the installation or unboxing video. I want to mention we do have a kickstand here that is actually very well placed so you don't get pedal strike. You know, it stays clear of it so you don't have to worry too much about that. It is adjustable as well. Let's talk about the tires here. We have a 27 and a half inch tire by 2 by 2.2 inches thick tire. These are Kenda tires and they're actually a low resistance. So you get the maximum amount of efficiency in riding this, but it also gives a good cushioning on the ride to actually take some of the absorption off of like maybe the little bumps and rocks and stuff that actually come out of riding. The other thing that we have here is a seat that is not necessarily the softest, but what they did add, we do have a zoom suspension seat post here and there's about 30 millimeters of travel, which means if you're sitting on here and you happen to hit a bump, you'll actually get a little bit of compression here, smoothing out that drop or maybe even a bump that you might hit there. Just to look at this paint job here, this is a beautiful paint job that we have with this Van Powers bike and even the battery that's integrated here. This is a battery section. As mentioned earlier, we have a Bafang mid-drive motor. It's an M600, puts out 500 watts of power, 48 volts. It boasts up to about a 70 mile range when combined with this 14 amp hour battery. Now, of course, that depends on the terrain that you have, how much you're helping it. It is a mid-drive motor, so it does take advantage of the gearing in the back, as I mentioned earlier. So that does actually help with actually getting more range on bikes. So that's a great thing about that too. Okay, so now moving up closer to the front here. First, I want to point out this fork. We have 80 millimeters of travel on this front suspension fork. Again, we have our preload adjustments and also our lockouts. And another 180 millimeter rotor on the front, same as the back. We also have kind of a semi-quick release type front area here where you can take out the tire if you really need to. This is our headlight here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the, up but the plus button on my screen there. And you can see this is what the headlight looks like nice wide handlebars at the top here a lot of stability these are accessories that are added on by me this is my cell phone holder and this is actually a water bottle bag holder so one thing i did notice it does not come with mounts for a water bottle one it actually blocks your what your step through which is why a lot of bikes don't put them on there uh, so this is a great alternative if you're looking for one we do have this at ebikeproducts.com shop there's a link below for that and you can get these extra equipment on here. I did also add on a mirror. I think every bike should actually have a mirror for your safety. This is actually a half knee mirror. To me, one of the best type of mirrors to have it because of the wide handlebars available, there's a lot of space to go ahead and add a mirror. It does have a micro shift shifter. Because this is a mid-drive motor, you will need to shift a lot more often than you would with a throttle type motor because as you're coming to a stop, you're gonna to want to go ahead and go up and down in your shifting. The good thing about this is that it actually does shift about four or five gears at a time by one push. There's you know, a different technique to riding a torque sensored bike. Like I said, it's not for everybody. A lot of times it's better for more experienced riders to use something like this where they'll get the most out of it, but also know how to use their gearing along with the motor as a combination. Doesn't mean that if you're not used to it, you can't learn it, but it does help to prevent. It's kind of like when you're first learning a stick shift or a standard car transmission it's almost exactly the same type of idea you know you might want to learn with an automatic with a throttle first or if you're going to learn on a, on a bike like this have somebody teach you the right way to make sure that you don't strip your gears or basically break your gears by or your chain by putting too much pressure on it when it shouldn't be doing shifting at certain points okay, so now that we have the bike turned around we're going to be looking closer at our drivetrain here one thing really cool about this bike is it has more gears than most of the other bikes that actually I've gotten for e-bikes. For one thing, it actually has nine speeds. Now with a cog this small in the front, that really does help to make sure that you can you know, utilize the higher speeds when possible or the motor. It does have actually a really good gearing ratio. The only thing that maybe I wished they had a little bit larger of would be the front here, but I can't understand why they have it that way is because of the fact that the motor will be doing a lot of pulling on the chain with a lot of torque. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of well balanced with all of your gearing. And this bike definitely has that. Now, the one thing really excellent about having a mid-drive motor, which I wasn't aware of, is how quiet it is. This bike is really, really quiet. Here we have our derailleur. Again, this is the micro shift. It's the Marvel LT. Very smooth shifting. Nine different gears going up and down. It's really just a really good drivetrain, good transmission, very well designed. This is our dashboard. And I would like to actually show how we have an adjustable stem. And this is where you can make your adjustments so that you can have the neck 
going up and down and coming closer to you. So I have it all the way up as close as to me. And then the handlebars were adjusted so that they kind of angled a little bit more toward me too. And then after that, I just adjusted all the brakes so that everything was in a position that was easy for me to grab from where I'm sitting. And with that, it actually made it really easy for me to ride this bike without having any reach issues because it wasn't as long, which would normally be a problem for bikes that are too large for me. So this is really nice. Now let's take a look at this display here. When I wear my uh, sunglasses, I do have a problem seeing the screen because of the polarization, but I can adjust it so that sometimes it gets to a better angle. But what you can see, it starts in N here, which means in neutral. There is no power that goes to the motor when I use the pedals at this at all. It's like riding a bike without any extra power being given to you. At pedal assist ones, you start to get more power going to the motor. And you'll see as I go up, I have up to five pedal assist. When you hold these two together, then you also get your menu. And with that, this menu here, you can see this Bluetooth connection because it does connect to your phone. There is a really cool app that you can download. It also has your time and when you want it on and off. And then you can also set the time here. And then at the bottom here, you have your different trip information, your average speed, your max speed. And by hitting the power button, right, this one here, just tapping it, it puts you through the different menus here as well. Your time, calories burned, I believe. And then trip odometer average speed and mag. Then you go back to the main menu here. What I do like too is they also have your battery in percentages. And I believe this is a scale that actually goes equal to that. And your speed is like a speedometer as well. You know, so we have all of those type of features and it's just a beautiful and it's very simple, easy to use screen here. It does also come with this bell. This is actually where you can charge the battery right on the bike itself if you wanted to. This is also an on and off type button. Push this once. And it kind of like, I guess, turns on the battery or, I mean, activates the connection. And then I can turn on the bike. And if we go a little higher up the bike here, you'll see that we actually have our keyhole for us to go in and pop out the battery. So I can stick this in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this key. And if I turn a little bit more, the battery now is loose. So I can just take out the battery here. All right. And then I want to show you that we also have an independent checker here. By pushing that, you can see it's red, green, and blue. So blue is actually full power. And then when it turns to green, that means it's like middle. And then the red means you need to recharge it. And so again, then we have it at full power. The next thing I want to show you here is that, as you can see here, it's a 14.4 amp hour battery along with that 48 volts. It's actually LG cells. LG is actually one of the major manufacturers that are actually among the top manufacturers that you want in any battery that you buy. There's a couple of big manufacturers and they're one of them. They're, this whole battery is also UL rated. So again, this is the Van Powers Urban Glide Ultra. Now the Urban Glides, again, there are three different models available. This one is the premium model because of the mid-drive motor that we've just covered. There is also one with hub motors with the same design of a frame. Van Powers is a fantastic bike. This is the second Van Powers bike I've been reviewing. First one, unfortunately, got stolen, but it is still a bike that was beautifully made. And uh, you can check that out in the link below. So I'll have a link to that bike. But um, then that was a road bike. But this here is definitely Van Powers is keeping up with their reputation of building some beautiful bikes. Very well made. If you're interested in getting this bike, you can again see it at the ebikeproducts.com slash ultra. That's the link that'll take you directly to the Van Powers website, right to this page to go ahead and take a look at it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, please be sure to like and subscribe. It helps other people find this bike. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.